everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. I want to go through part three now of the Diamond Painting mini series. This will be, I already said part three. I am hoping I got everything on my desk that I am going to need for this part. If not, I guess I will just pause it as I have been doing a lot in these past videos um, and I will go get what I need. Anyhow, the first thing I want to do is show you what is on my desk. This is some of the completed diamond paintings that I have done that still need to be framed with the exception of this one. I just wanted to get that one out to show you how I framed it. Um, this was my very first diamond painting. And as you can see, it is a set of dolphins. It is a partial, and this is why a lot of people, let's see, is this supposed to go that way or this way? This way. A lot of people do like the partials because the background is painted on. Let me zoom you in a little bit for this. Okay, so you can see the background is painted on. It is not uh, drilled with the diamonds. Only the dolphins, the two dolphins themselves, um, have uh, drills on them. So the fish around here are all painted on the canvas, and it's very pretty that way. Um, the detail in the background, of course, is much greater when it is a partial drill because this is painted and does not have the diamonds on. Of course, these look much more pixelated where the drills are, whereas where it's painted is much more detailed. So that is why a lot of people do like the partials. So that is my very first one. This was a round partial. Put them back behind me here. This is a round also. And this is the very first one that I framed. The size, gosh, what was this, a 20 by 30, I think, maybe? And it fit perfectly on this pre-stretched canvas that I bought from Michaels. I bought a set of, I don't know, if it was a set of five or something, it was on a, a special. Um, and I picked up a pack of these for a few bucks. Um, and what I do, and I'm going to show you how I make my own stretched canvases, a little later um, to work with these larger diamond paintings. Um, some of them, however, you can put on the standard pre-made stretched canvases. So what I did is, and what I do for all of mine, and again, I'll get into this more in detail when I go through the actual framing of how I frame. I just paint um, the edges and the borders in a coordinating color. I spray it with a shellac. Originally, when I did this, I sprayed the diamond painting too. I am no longer doing that, and I'll show you what I do now. Um, and I glue the diamond painting down to the canvas. I cut the edges off when I'm done with it, and this is how it came out. So this is the first one that I framed. And this is how I frame all of mine. So I'm just going to show you a few that I did. Once we get back to the ones underneath, um, these they're they're real big, and so of course I'm not going to be able to get them into the picture in its in, in their entirety. But um, this is the first square drill that I did, and let me bring you down in in case you don't know or have not seen a square drill. Let's see. Okay, so you can see how tightly the um, square drills fit together. You know, they're right next to each other. And that's why the square drills take a little bit longer than the rounds. Um, as you've seen in part two, at the end where I did show you how to drill with the round drills, those are, to me and in my opinion, much easier than these squares because these squares you do have to fit on straight and they do fit real tightly together. But again, I like the more finished look of these squares. Okay, let's bring you back out all the way as far as I can anyhow. 
Okay, so now this is a diamond, um, a diamond painting. Yeah, duh, that's why we're here. This is a, another dolphin one that I did early on. This is another round, but this is a full round. So there is no background painted on. Um, everything on here is all with the drills. And as you can see, it is not framed. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to frame it either. I have nowhere to put it. Um, I do have a set of three other dolphins that pictures that I did buy, and this is for my bathroom. I just have not gotten them framed yet. Everything that you will see from here on out are all full square diamonds. Um, uh, yeah, full square diamond paintings because I don't do partials. Nothing against them. A lot of people like them. I just don't do them. And again, up until now, <laughs> I have only wanted to do the square diamond paintings and not the rounds. That, of course, has since changed. So, how does this go? Oh yeah, this one goes this way. So again, these are all diamond paintings that I have to frame yet. So this is one that's going in my bathroom because it is all dolphin based. And then here is a, another one. It's kind of yin and yang type of a dolphin picture. Again, full square diamond painting. And then a little bit of a bigger one and more colorful. I really like how this turned out. Um, this again, a full square. And, and the colors in there are pretty. So again, this is one that um, needs to be framed and will be going in my bathroom. You may occasionally, like on this one, and I love it when they do this, you can see along this side are your symbols to complete the diamond painting, your color codes. Once in a while, you will get a diamond painting where they also have them down here. And that is so nice when they do that because if you're working down here, you don't have to glance up over there, especially when you get on larger diamond paintings. It really comes in handy when they have the codes down here too. Not too often will you find this, but when you do, it really comes in handy. You can always, um, if you want to, when you get that inventory sheet that I showed you in part two, you can make a photocopy of that cut out this little key and if you want to tape it here or um, what I've done especially on my very large waterfall one that I'm working on now I keep it off to the side and I can refer to it when this is way up in no man's land and I can't see it very well so just thought I'd point that out now here is one that I completed more recently this I call my lion moth, and maybe I'll just keep them sideways because if I put them the other way, you're really not going to be able to see them too well. But, yeah, I call them my lion moth, and I thought he turned out so pretty. I love this one, and I am going to find somewhere to put this one. <laughs> but, yeah, I thought it was kind of really different where you have the lion and then you have the moth wings coming off them kind of a morph of a lion and a moth so that's i get all of these off of aliexpress by the way except for those very first ones i did get those off of amazon because i just wanted to try it out and see if i would like it this one i absolutely love and this is the one that i finished most currently or most recently and it is two babies um, in the clouds with doves around them isn't that cute I just love it which way are you guys seeing it oh, okay you're seeing it differently than I am so there with the um, babies in the clouds I thought that just turned out adorable. This is, however, one of the diamond paintings that I was having some major, major problems with, and I'm going to have to go back and fix it before I can frame it. I had a huge problem with popping drills on this one, and yeah, I had to go back, remove some of these out of here, try to get some smaller ones in, and there are still some that are popped off, and I'm going to have to go back in 
see where they're all missing and replace them. So this one has some work to do. And this is after I have gone over it with my roller and rolling pin and you name it. And now, you know, there's a number of places where there are drills missing. So, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I do still have the drills. I still have the key. <coughs> oh, I swallowed wrong. Um, so I know what's going to go in, in what area. It's just, like I said, it's going to need some fixing up, unfortunately. Okay, then this is the other one that I did most recently. And it is a very large, this is a 60 by 75. And this is a mythical um, fairy and unicorn diamond painting. And I thought that turned out really pretty. I really like this one. And again, this is one that I am going to find somewhere to put it. <laughs> again, when it gets framed. Then I am going to show you a couple that are framed. Besides my itty bitty one. Um, I do have some up on my walls. I'm not going to bother getting those down. Um, the first one I'm going to show you, this is one that I made up and I did take down uh, off the wall because some of you wanted to see what Bella looks like. I made a diamond painting of my pupper dog. So if you can see, this is what she looks like. And then I did at the very bottom, I don't know if you can see that, I had a tag made up from um, Amazon. I ordered it on Amazon and I personalized. It says Bella 2017 because that's when I made this diamond painting. Now you're wondering, how did I get this diamond painting of my dog made? <laughs> you can have any custom made up that you want. If you have a picture of a pet, if you have a picture of you and your spouse in a wedding picture, um, Anything, anything and everything. If you find a picture on the internet, now it has to be, of course, non-licensed. We don't want to do any, you know, go against any infringements rights or anything like that. There are a lot of things out on Pinterest that, that we as colorists know should not be out there um, because they are illegal. There are lots of coloring pages out there that should not be out there. Um, same is true with some images. So you can't take just any image off the internet, but you know, most of them you can. And this next picture that I'm going to show you is huge. So it is not going to all get in frame, but it is a picture that I did get off the internet. I'm just going to plop this down on the floor. This is a large, large diamond painting that I did for my godson. He just hasn't been able to come and pick it up yet. And I'm just going to kind of hold it here. It is a very large dragon. And this one I did get framed. And like I said, he just has to come get it. I did get this picture off of um, the internet, though, because he liked really lime green and black type of colors. So I specified, I asked the seller that I use for, um, or that I've, oh, I'm sorry, I'm bumping you, that I've used in the past for my customs. You kind of send them a picture and you say, hey, will this size work for it? Um, and they'll kind of give you an idea of what it would look like if you went with that particular size um, and nothing is cropped off. I did have one where they sent it back and they said this is what it would look like and part of it was cropped off. I think it was the top that crop, got cropped off so I said no let's go a little bit bigger then. I want this in there. So you just work with the seller. Um, if you do want to order a custom and you're not sure how to go about it just let me know down in the comments and I will try to help you out with that. Okay I just wanted to get that out of the way with some of the uh, some of my finished ones because it was taking up all my space so I couldn't go on with the other things that I wanted to cover. Okay, the next thing that I want to talk about, um, oh yeah, I was going to show you these. Remember in part two, if you watched part two of this series, I talked about getting the um, parchment squares to put on your diamond painting if you wanted to take off those opaque coverings. 
that I showed that I cut mine into squares, you can take off that entire covering. And then the this is a pack that I got off of Amazon, and I will link this below too. There's 500 sheets in here, so this is going to last you a long time. Um, I got this size because I do go with a little bit of a bigger square when I am diamond painting. Uh, these are five and a half by five and a half. Um, and I probably would have gone a little bigger than this had I known, I guess, that these were this small. For a smaller diamond painting like the one, the round that we're working on now together, um, this is fine. This size would be fine. However, when I'm working on my great big one, like my waterfall, I probably would go with a little bit of a bigger square than this. But this will do. Okay. So, just thought I would show you that because I remembered to bring them over here on my desk. Yay me. Okay, the next thing that I want to get into is storage ideas. What do I do with my drills, with my kit that you showed me how to kit up when I am done with my diamond painting? Some people actually do throw out their leftover drills, but the vast majority of us keep them. And the reason why we keep them is because let's say you're doing a diamond painting, three diamond paintings down the road, and you run out of a color. Yes, you can message the seller, but if you got it off of AliExpress, again, you're gonna be waiting for a month to get those drills and you typically don't want to wait that long. Now there is a seller on Etsy that I have used in the past a couple of times that is um, here in the States. So if you want to get your drills quite fast, you can go through her. Um, if I remember, I will link her Etsy store down below in the description, um, but you get them within a few days. Of course, the price is about double than what you would pay over from AliExpress, but there, it's still not bad. I think it comes to, what was it, like 40 something cents for a 200 pack. Um, I think it was that. I can't remember now. Um, but anyhow, it, it doesn't cost a lot, especially if you don't need a, you know, a huge amount. And typically if you're, you know, you ran out of a few colors or something, you probably only need a few packs and you'll probably pay more in shipping than you will for the, uh, for the drills themselves. I think shipping was like three something though. So it, it wasn't that terribly bad. Okay. Let me grab over here these trays and they're quite heavy. This is my, sorry for the noise. This is my storage system for my square drills. Now there are lots and lots of trays here. These are the trays that I use for all my diamond paintings. This top one is my work in progress tray, and this is for the waterfall that I'm working on. So you can see all my little labels of all the colors that are in the waterfall. Now, because that one is so huge, all the drills did not fit in here, but you can see the different size of these containers. In part two, I linked these trays. I linked, um, you can get these with all, these are called tinies. The smallest size are called tinies. You can get, it's called an 82 piece Doris uh, Elizabeth Ward tray. And I again linked it in the second video or the second part of this series, but I'm going to link everything that I had mentioned in the first two. Um, and in this one, I'm going to leave links to all of that down below in case you are interested in getting it. So there are tiny containers, then there are smalls, then there are mediums, and I don't have a large in this particular one. Here is a large. Okay, so they are quite big. Typically, I use the largest for my 310s. Here, I needed a bunch. These are the leftover drills from that baby diamond painting, the baby in the clouds. This is what I all have left over. <laughs> so you can see, yeah, you get quite a few extra drills. Look at all the 820s I have left over. So yeah, 
Um, so again, this is my work in progress tray. Now these two, both of these, are diamond paintings that I have already completed. These, I believe, are left over from that lion moth that I showed you. So what do I do with all of these when I get them done? I am going to show you what I do. Now this that I'm gonna show you is only for these square drills. I have a different system for the rounds because again, I'm just getting back into my rounds. So I don't have any saved yet in permanent storage, but I will. These um, five trays, there's five trays underneath here, um, are where I store all of my square leftover drills. I have them all in numerical order let me zoom you down a little and Bella sees something again. Okay, now, uh, yeah, okay. So here we have number 150, where am I at? Okay, 150 is the very first DMC code that we use. So that is numero uno. And then it's 151, 152, 154, um, and on and on and on and on and on. Um, I am using one out of here in the um, diamond painting. I am currently doing that waterfall because I ran out. See, there is a reason. <laughs> and I think it was one up in here. It's one of the blues anyhow. So I labeled all my trays. You know me from um, my coloring and how I organize everything. I use my label maker a lot. And I have on your square tiles, number one. Yes, it should say square drills, number one. But I was a newbie when I did all this. <laughs> and then it goes on to number two. So it keeps going down in order. I love these trays. I just love them. I put links to all the, or I will be putting links to all the different size containers that I showed you. There's four different sizes of these. For my permanent storage, I just use the tinies. And I will show you the labels that I use both for the squares and what I'm going to use on the round permanent storage too. So here is number four. This is my last one that I have filled, but because it is almost filled up, and I'm going to zoom you back out so you can see better now. Um, because it is almost filled, I did set up a number five tray. And this is what an empty tray looks like. And you can order an empty tray too, um, which I have done a number of times because I may be working on one of my diamond paintings and then I want to set up the next diamond painting once I get close to finishing the previous one. So I will take my empty um, tray and I will set it up with um, the all the drills for the new diamond painting. Okay, so this is what my permanent storage looks like. I want to show you um, Again, my handy dandy label maker. <laughs> I keep all of my extra little containers in these pencil cases. So these, this contains all of my smalls, okay? Because I use tinies the most. They are in this, let me get this out of the way. They are in this big one. So I didn't label it. It's the only big one I have and you can see it's empty right now. <laughs> because I have used them all. Um, but we do have the smalls, like I showed you. These are the small size. And then we have the medium size, which is this big. And then we have the big ones. And these do hold a lot. <laughs> you can fit a lot of drills in these. And these are so nice because the lid just flips up. You can dump what you need into the tray. And then because some of those, the ones that I like, anyhow, the drill trays have the spout on, you can just pour it right back in here. When you're filling them up, if you want to take the lid off, 
so that when you um, cut open your packets to pour in here when you're setting up um, your tray or however you're going to do it, you can pop the lid right back, right off, and then it pops right back in, and you can snap it shut. So yes, I love these, and I use them in every single diamond painting that I do. A square ones, anyhow. <laughs> so these are, again, the Doris Elizabeth Ward containers, and I will be linking all of this down below in the description in case you would like to look at them on Amazon and or purchase something. Okay, so that is, oh, I was going to show you. How do I go about taking the diamonds, the drills, from I'm just going to use this as an example because the two that I need to put in my permanent storage are kind of buried over here now. Um, let's say this is one that I have completed and I now want to put it into my permanent storage. What I would do is I take, and again, everybody does this differently. I just want to show you how I do it. I take out this one and it's 159 so I look in my permanent storage and I look to see if I have a 159 if I do I dump these in with the ones that I have existing so the more diamond paintings you do of course the more numbers you actually have existing in here already and you won't have to set up a new little tray let's say 783 over here I do not have in my permanent storage so then I will take one of my tiny containers um, and by that time I will have some extras so um, but this is why I I did purchase a bunch of just extra containers and again they'll all be linked down below um, but I would take the sticker off of here because I'm this is a tiny if it was a bigger one then you would have to get a tiny container out um, but I take the sticker off and then I use and where did I put my stickers too many things on my desk I tell you I'm not sure where I put my little labels let me look if it's under the binder here Yes, okay, they're over here. They're kind of buried. Sorry for my arm in my way. I'm trying to get what I'm looking for. Shouldn't have stuck all this underneath. Okay, so these are the two different sets of labels or DMC stickers that I have. This you can get off of um, Amazon, and I did not have this in part two of this series, but I will hopefully remember to include this. This I bought on Amazon. It contains all of the DMC codes and they're itty bitty little, where am I at? Little bitty stickers that have all of the numbers that correspond to all the DMC codes. And that is what you see down on here on my little containers. So if this particular one was not already in there, I would just peel this off find my 783 sticker, put that on there, and get it in numerical order in the trays. Now, of course, you know, if it's one here that's stuck in the middle, you're going to have to shift all the other ones down. <laughs> so it can be a little time consuming, especially if the one that you have to add is in the beginning, one of the beginning numbers, because then you have to shift all the way through four different trays. <laughs> so sometimes tearing down your um, your done trays um, can take a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. The other type of DMC stickers that you can get, and I got, I think I ordered three sets of these because I think they were only a couple bucks. Um, these are DMC codes and they are purple. So, of course, I had to get them purple. Um, and you can see I did use some of them, um, but I do have a brand new set, too. These um, stickers is what I am going to use for my round storage, my permanent storage. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, again, these were off AliExpress, so I'm not going to leave a link to them. All you would have to do, if you do use AliExpress, do a search for DMC um, floss stickers 
and this should pop up as well as I believe these are probably on are on AliExpress too if I if I remember right. So DMC floss stickers. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, I know I went over that kind of fast. Um, but this is what I do with my leftover drills. I just convert them over into my permanent storage. So my work in progress, my permanent. Now, my, again, my permanent storage has the typed out, you know, the good stickers. And these are just my hand handwritten stickers for my work in progress pictures. Okay, so there is that. Let me get these out of the way. If you watched um, my tour of my work area here, my, my recording area, and then I took you into the dining room where all of my coloring supplies and books are located, you've seen this whole great big stack of trays up on my bookcases, and this is what they are. <laughs> it is for my permanent storage. Now, let's go on to the rounds. Um, I showed you the container that I am using for my work in progress picture in um, part two of this series. I will show you it again. It is the Craft Mates. Um, I got this from Michaels, but again, it is available on Amazon and it will be linked down below. It just opens up and I put little stickers on here too just like I do with the squares each number corresponds to each color you pull this out and I did show this all in part two but I'll just kind of go over it again you push in this knob and you can open up one container at a time I'm afraid to do this because they're staticky um, Pour out what you need. The others cannot open. Once you release this, push it back in to close it again, and nothing can fall out. Okay, so 56 colors can fit in here unless you need two, you know, containers maybe because you have a ton of the 310s. Again, our most common color, black. Um, so some people will use a couple of them for a color where... Um, there's so many, you need two containers. But otherwise, there are 28 on each side, so you have 56 containers here. So this will work for the vast majority of your diamond paintings. I did also show the other um, container um, case that, get off of that, <laughs> that I um, bought. It is buried over in the corner of my desk, so I'm not gonna haul that one back out again. But I could not use that because I did not get the little vials. It is a 60 case, um, 60 vials in the, or little plastic containers that sit in this nice little case with a, with a carrying handle. And I accidentally ordered the case without, I was wondering why it was so much cheaper than the others. <laughs> now I know why. Um, so I'm waiting um, to get those containers to go in that case. And then in the future, we will go ahead and use that. So I did put a link that is available on uh, Amazon also. It is a little bit pricier than what you would pay for it on AliExpress. But again, it's just going to be based on how fast do you want it and how fast do you need it. So this is a binder. It is by Tech Gear. I just picked this up at Walmart. This is the brainchild of, um, um, oh God, Kicking Cancer's Butt with Ella. I did leave a link in the previous part of this series to um, five really awesome diamond painting channels that I watch all the time. There are many, many more out there, but these I think are my favorites. And so I did leave links to those um, gals channels if you wanted to go and check them out. There are a lot of reviews of different sellers by um, on AliExpress, especially by uh, Diamond Painting by Donnie, but all of them do reviews and um, um, just show you many, many different things. They do a lot of what's called drill with me's, which is like our color and chats 
only it is doing diamond painting. I do have this in the front. Gives a listing of all of the DMC numbers and then their name because there's a nice pocket in the front of this binder. So again, this is by Tech Gear. Got it at Walmart. Then at Walmart, I picked up a whole slew of, these are just, let me bring it over a bit so you can see it all. These are just baseball card inserts. And I bought a couple boxes of them, so I do have some spares in the back here. Um, what I did was I went through every single, and hence the printout here, <laughs> I went through every single number, every single color, and I wrote a sticker out um, for every single one that is available, that is currently out there. So, yes, this took me a while to do, but we go all the way through our very last number being, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, yeah, 38.95 is the very last number. And what... I am going to do is when I have some round drills left over from say this first diamond painting, this round diamond painting that we're doing, and I have some leftover drills. I am going to use this binder and I bought a box of, now yeah, I'm never going to use these up, it's a box of 500 2 inch by 3 inch um, little plastic bags. And what I am going to do is I am going to take these little plastic bags. I am going to dump in my leftover drills. You can see quite a few are going to fit in this baggie. And then I'm going to take one of those purple DMC codes and I'm going to put that on here. And then I'm going to put one on the back also. Because even though many of these baseball sheets um, are open on the top so that you can put a baseball card facing this way, you know, in this way, and also the back side. I'm not putting anything in the back side in this case, but I do want to have a label on the black, back, black, on the back side in case I'm flipping through here and I want to see um, the number from both sides. So, although what Ella did, um, and I am going to do this, I think. She, um, how did she do that again? I'm going to have to go back and look. Um, she put, oh, she didn't put it on the front side. That's right, because this label is here. She just put it on the back side um, so that when you slide it in here, it will show on the back through the plastic. So that is what I'm going to do, too. So I'm going to follow the method that she used because this is not going to take up near the amount of room as my five trays do but again i do a lot more squares a lot bigger square diamond paintings than i anticipate doing in rounds so i think this system is going to work great for me if you anticipate doing a lot of large round diamond paintings, I don't know if this is going to work. I do have some 834s in here. Um, this is from one of those very first rounds that I did, and I did find this in some storage. Um, so I am going to put these in a baggie and label them and then put the baggie in here. You can, I suppose, leave them like this. But once you start getting this more filled up, it's going to get kind of bunchy. Bunchy, is that a word? Um, so this is how I am going to be permanently storing my round diamond drills. Okay, so we got that all covered. Those are the storage options that I use. Again, you may want to use something else. The other YouTube channels um, on diamond painting, they have a whole plethora of different um, ideas on how to store your diamond drills. And one of their ideas may work perfectly for you. So definitely do a search on YouTube for diamond painting storage or diamond painting storage ideas or, you know, things like that. And yeah, you will get a ton of ideas of what you can do. 
Okay, so now we finished our diamond painting. We got um, our extra drills all stored away in our permanent storage. Now what do we do? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to bring up one of these smaller diamond paintings up off the floor. Well, okay, the one I grabbed wasn't a smaller one, but it'll work. Um, many of us seal our diamond paintings once they are done, and once you've gone over them with a roller, everything is laying flat, you don't have any missing drills, and yes, we go over them with a fine-tooth comb to make sure nothing is missing. I used to spray mine. I would take them outside, and I would shake this up, and I would spray mine with this Krylon spray. It is called Triple Thick Crystal Clear Glaze. And it didn't seem to take away any of the shininess of the diamonds because it is a glaze. And this triple thick worked really well. But after I did oh, quite a few diamond paintings and I framed them, I gave my kids all diamond paintings for Christmas one year. And I mean, I have a number of them hanging on my walls already. I came to the realization that it was, in fact, taking away a little bit of this super, super shine that diamond painting is known for. Um, so I no longer use this to spray on the diamond painting itself. However, I do still use it for something else when I am doing the actual framing itself. And I will show you what I mean. Now, as far as sealing the diamond painting, uh, itself. I am not sure who originally found this. It is called, and I'll zoom in here again, it is called Tombow Mono, um, it's aqua, it's aqua liquid glue is what it's called, and it is by Tombow. It does have two tips to it. There is a pen tip, which I'm assuming is used in crafting, which, yeah, this is, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and then there is actually a brush tip and this is the tip that we use in our diamond painting and what you would do is you would squeeze it out squeeze a little bit on and then brush it all over okay as you can imagine though <laughs> this is the problem that I found with it if you are doing very very large diamond paintings and so like my waterfall um, it takes forever to cover a large diamond painting with this <laughs> and my large waterfall I don't know if I'm going to seal because again I'm having that one professionally framed I'm toying with the idea of whether I want to have it put behind glass or not so I may or may not seal that one um, but what I'm going to try to do and I don't know if anybody else has tried this I've seen it mentioned on one of the Facebook uh, groups um, about diamond painting and the gal that uh, thought of it said she hadn't tried it yet. I had just checked with her a little while ago and said she hadn't tried it yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this, um, this glue, this uh, aqua glue into a bowl and I am going to water it down and then I am going to just brush it on here. And it's going to be much, much easier. Because I don't think that we need this strong of glue to just cover and keep our drills on. We just kind of need them all stuck together, you know. So I'm going to try that um, when I uh, do my next sealing. These are not sealed yet. Um, I'm going to try it out on a small one first <laughs> to see how it's going to work. Um, and when I do try that, I will let you know how it works. But otherwise, yes, this Tombow Aqua Glue does not take the shine away from your diamonds whatsoever. It is the only thing that we have found that you can seal your diamond paintings with that does not take any of the shine away. So good stuff. You can get this at Michael's. You can get this on Amazon. Again, if I remember, I will leave a link down below because I figured I was going to go through so much of this. You can get a case of this from Michael's at a big discount and the cost per 
tube of this glue goes way down. So that could be an option for you too. Okay, just thought I would put that out there. Okay, so that is as far as sealing your diamond painting. Now, when it comes to framing them, I'm not going to get that back up. Yes, I will. <laughs> I lied. Um, the first thing I do when I'm ready to seal my diamond painting, I mean frame my diamond painting, I will go ahead and I will seal it. Again, after rolling over it multiple times with a rolling pin and my handy dandy little dual ended roller, I will then take my good scissors. This is a Tim Holtz scissors and I love this thing. Another one, if I remember, I will link it below. I really, really like the scissors. I will go and I will trim off right to the edge of the diamonds as, as you know, close as I can get and as evenly as I can get. So again, this is another reason you want your diamonds as straight as possible on the outside rows and columns. But I will cut all of the white border off. After that, it is ready to be framed. Now, there are multiple different ways of framing. Uh, some people do find a picture frame. They actually have found picture frames at, you know, um, thrift stores and things like that um, very cheaply that they uh, put their diamond paintings in. Now, the, the biggest problem, I guess, with framing these in our standard picture frames these go by centimeters. Our picture frames go by inches. <laughs> so there is a problem many, many times. That is the biggest problem. These si The size of these diamond paintings don't correspond to our size of picture frames most of the time. You may luck out with some sizes. Um, many times you won't. So what some people do, I do not do this because again, I have my own way of framing. Um, what some people do is they'll get their picture frame and it will fit, say, this way, but it will be a little bit big the other way. So they will just put some um, decorative uh, duct tape on each of those sides that kind of coordinates with the picture itself. Um, I don't like to do that. My OCD, that kind of drives my OCD a little crazy because it's not all symmetrical. <laughs> so, um, but I have seen a number of people do that. It is a much cheaper way, easier way of framing your diamond paintings. And you can use a standard picture frame in that case. Okay, so that is the first step that I do to um, for framing my diamond paintings. Um, Again, if the diamond painting that you're doing is large enough where it is not going to fit on the standard size of your pre-stretched canvases that you can buy in the art stores, most of mine are way too big for that. <laughs> so I buy my own stretcher bars and I just brought a few of them out here. Sorry for the sound, the loud sounds. Um, I buy these from Blick Studio online, and us colorists all know of Blick. They do carry all types of art supplies, and they do carry these stretcher bars. And what I do is I measure out, after I've cut the white border off, I measure how many inches wide that diamond painting is, and I measure how tall that diamond painting is. And then, to that measurement, I add two inches. Okay, so let's say the diamond painting was 19 inches wide. I want a 21 inch stretcher bar. So here is a 21 inch stretcher bar. Now, of course, a picture has two sides, so you will need two 21 inch stretcher bars. One time, the first time I ordered these, I forgot to order two of each. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Duh. There are two sides to each um, length. Um, and then let's say the other side was 15 inches. I add, or thereabouts. It's not always going to be exact because, again, it's in centimeters. 
Um, if it was 15 inches, I would add two, and I would get a 17 inch stretcher bar. So you have your 17 inch stretcher bars. Here's another 17. I don't know if I have two. Are these both 21s? Yeah. So what you do then is you make a square out of these stretcher bars. They fit together. This is something I always have Bob do for me, and he squares up nice for me, so they're a perfect square. But you can see how these bars fit together with like a tongue and groove type of system. I'm just going to take it back apart. But that is what stretcher bars are. Now, if you want to use this as a frame, you can. That's not the purpose of stretcher bars. The purpose of stretcher bars is painters use these all the time to make up their canvases to paint on. That is the purpose behind these. So I'm not going to be able to get this big thing in frame, but I buy a huge roll of canvas. It is a continuous roll of canvas. This one, I think, I forgot how many feet wide. I think I got a 10 foot one in length. So it's good for a number of diamond paintings. And what I do is I make my own stretched canvas to the dimensions that I need. So once Bob gets this all squared up for me, and it is in a square, I then take that roll of canvas and I will pull it out. This I do on my dining room table because you can imagine it takes up a large area to do this. I use my handy dandy Tim Holtz scissors and I cut the canvas so that it's a little bit bigger than what my stretcher bars are. And then what you have to do, and I'm not going to um, show you in detail how this is. There are videos out there and that's how I learned it <laughs> was by a YouTube, well a few YouTube videos, um, in especially how to do the corners because those are the most difficult. But you in essence will take that stretched canvas, you will pull it over the top and then it gets stapled on the back and I bought one of these heavy duty staplers and you will just staple the stretched canvas after you pull it tight around. Now they do have canvas uh, pullers. This is a puller. It should have a spring in here, but it keeps falling out. And what you do is you clamp this on the canvas and you pull it around the stretcher bar so that it's pulled really taut. And artists use these um, canvas pullers. They have teeth in here so you can really clamp on. I don't use them any longer. I did in the beginning and it does help to pull it really tight around here and back underneath so that you can staple it down. You put, you go around the square, you put one staple in the middle on this side, one staple across opposite, then you put one staple in the middle up there, one staple down here, and then you keep going around so as you're pulling it, it doesn't get distorted and it keeps it even. So that is how I make my own um, stretched canvas. Again, if anybody has any questions on all of this, I am going through this relatively fast, but it's not meant to be a detailed instructional video on how to do all this. It's just to give you some ideas. Once I have that stretched canvas made, um, and it is to the size that I need for my diamond painting. I don't want it just plain yucky canvas. As you've seen in the small diamond painting that I showed you that I did have framed, and also Bella that I framed, and that great big dragon, I paint them. However, the canvas that you buy is not treated. You have to treat it first with gesso. This is a huge bottle of Liquitex um, acrylic gesso that I got at Hobby Lobby. It is $25, but again, you can use your 40 to 50 even percent off coupon. There's all kinds of white gesso available out there. I just like uh, Liquitex, so this is what I use. So I go in from the edges of the stretch canvas that I made because I know the diamond painting is going to be coming in about an inch because I added two inches to the size of the 
diamond painting so that there is an inch on each side. So I know that when I paint this border and the edge of the canvas, it needs to be one inch all the way around. Of course, I go in a little bit more just to make sure I have it all covered and nothing will show once I put the diamond painting down on this canvas. So first I gesso it with this because otherwise your paint, and I'm going to show you that next, is going to soak right into the canvas and you're going to go through a ton of paint which is much more expensive than this stuff. Not that paint is that expensive either, but <laughs> this will, um, you only have to do a couple layers of paint, sometimes even only one. Um, this is, I just use any, whoops, any cheap type of acrylic paint that I can get my hands on. This is just a small sampling of paints that I have. I just grabbed a couple from the other room in my spare room over the back of the door. Again, from Michael's, I believe I got these. They were on sale. Um, it's something that hangs on the door, and it has all these little pockets that come down, and you can put all of your acrylic paints in it. So um, I just grabbed a few colors. These are all Apple Barrel that you can get from Walmart. They're 50 cents a piece. Okay. I just wanted a wide variety of different paints, and it's up to you what color. What color do you want that frame to be? I typically am going to take a piece of cardstock because paper's too thin. <laughs> and I will take um, one of my foam brushes, and this is what I always paint with on my canvases to um, do the gesso and to um, do the acrylic paint. I just bought this variety pack. I believe this was also from Michaels. Walmart has them too. You can get them even at the dollar store. Um, so I will take my brush, usually a thinner one, and I paint, I kind of dwindle it down to maybe three or four colors that I would possibly want to frame this picture with. And I will take a teeny little bit in a little, I got these little plastic dishes, and I'll take a teeny little bit and I will make like a one inch swatch down the um, sheet of cardstock. And then I'll take the next color and I'll do the same thing. Let them dry. Then I cut the strips out <laughs> and I put the diamond painting on the canvas and I put this little strip next to it. And I look at each color and that's kind of how I determine which one looks best in my eye anyhow. So there are also even metallic colors. I did do one, believe, I believe it was for my daughter. Um, I did a deer what else was on there? I can't remember. Um, but I did it with a metallic um, border, and it really turned out pretty. So there are a bunch of different metallic paints, too. I think um, these are by uh, Folk Art. They're by Plaid, which also does your... Uh, what am I thinking of? Oh, well. doesn't matter. Um, you can get these. I think Walmart maybe also carries metallic. I'm not sure. I think maybe I got those at Michael's though. Okay, so that is how I make my frames. That is how I paint my frames. And again, I do the borders and I do the edges around because if you're hanging this up on a wall, you don't want the edges to be white either. So I paint all the way around. Now I did mention I do do something with this um, spray, even though I don't spray my diamond paintings with this yet, it does give it a nice shine. And so before I glue down my diamond painting onto the canvas, after I'm all done gessoing and painting, I take it outside and I spray where that paint is with this spray. So all the, the entire border that you've painted and all the edges around the outside, I spray with this because it gives it kind of a shine. And it's not, even though these here are matte uh, paints and you could use the shiny gloss paints I suppose and, and maybe you wouldn't have to do this I just like how these matte paints paint on um, over the top of the gesso so that's just what I use you could do some playing around with other things and I may do that in the future and see what the gloss paints look like um, but that's what I do with this Krylon now this um, triple thick crystal clear glaze you can get this on Amazon also what can't you get on Amazon um, my first can, though, I did get at 
was it Michael's or Hobby Lobby, one or the other. They are at the craft stores also. Okay, the very last thing you have to do, and I didn't bring it over here because everybody knows what they look like. After you um, have it all gessoed, it's all painted, it's sprayed. Oh, before you put the hanger on, I guess you got to glue it down, don't you? <laughs> this is the uh, glue that I use. It's by Aline's. Um, they, you know, this company has out a ton of different products. I use the original Tacky Glue. I get the big bottles, and I turn my diamond painting over, and I just go back and forth with the glue, and I spread it out with my brush. This is very, very thick, though, and lately I've been having a problem um, with it in that it will leave some ridges in my diamond painting even after I press it down and I put it upside down on my table and I put heavy books on it, there's ridges in it. And I don't know if it's from where I initially put the glue down, even though I spread it out and I will use a credit card sometimes and, you know, do it that way too. So here again, I think what I'm going to try with this glue, um, just like the sealer, the Tombow sealer, I think I'm going to try adding a little bit of water to this. Um, put it in a dish first, add a little bit of water, not much, but just I want to thin it out just a teeny bit um, and then brush it on the canvas rather than going directly with this um, as the applicator. So again, next time I try this and if it works, I will let you know if my diamond painting falls off the canvas. I know it didn't work. <laughs> Okay, then the very last thing, after you have your diamond painting glued down, many times um, I have to have Bob help me if the diamond painting of a, is of any size whatsoever um, because what you have to do is you measure because you want this diamond painting um, centered on that canvas, of course, and I'm not going to show it here, but if anybody is interested how I do this, let me know, and I will give you a demo. Um, I measure down from the top, up from the bottom. Um, uh, well, first of all, I take that back. I put the diamond painting on the canvas, and I center it about as, as well as I can and have it as straight as I can. Then I measure from the top left, the center, the top right, and I see if it's even. If it's not, I adjust it a little bit, then I measure down here and I see if this is the same inch mark as up on top. And sometimes you gotta shift it up a little, you know, shift it down a little, and then I do the same thing with the sides so that I know that it is centered on this canvas. Once you know it's centered, you take masking tape and you pull a strip out and you tape it along the very top edge of that diamond painting. Then you tape it along the side, not, not over the top, but just along so you know exactly where that diamond painting has to go on that canvas and it will be centered. This was a neat tip that I found a long time ago from, it was on some YouTube channel. I have no idea where I've seen this. Um, so I do that. Then I take, after it is all taped off, um, then I take and I turn my diamond painting over and I put the glue on and I have Bob come over and help me <laughs> flip this diamond painting back over after I have all the glue on and he helps me even it out, you know, get it right up to where this tape is, this masking tape, and so that we can get it centered on this particular canvas. The smaller ones I can do on my own, but the larger ones, yeah, I definitely need his help <laughs> to do. So once you get that on there and it's pressed down good, I flip it over, I take my roller, and this is the one time when a rolling pin does not work as good and I struggled with this for a long time until I got that small dual handed dual handled wooden roller I can get in the corners 
of this um, stretch canvas inside when you flip it upside down. Of course, there's a ridge here. So with a rolling pin, you can't get right up into the corners. Um, so I'll take that, that uh, double-ended roller and I will go all over in the inside and I'll smush everything out and make it nice and even, make sure all the glue is out. Then I'll flip it over and I'll take the masking tape back off put it upside down on my table in here, put some heavy books on, and I leave it set overnight. Once that is done, yeah, now we can get back to the very last step that I was talking about before I had to get to the glue, um, and that is putting your picture hanger on the back. And we've all done that, so that I did not bring over here. I have some little plastic um, dishes, some containers that flip up with a lid, and I have all of the, the metal tooth teeth, tooths <laughs> that you put on the back in the center and then in another itty bitty container I have those little bitty nails um, that you pound in to put that picture hanger on. On the very large diamond paintings you probably have to put two on. The majority of them you only need one in the middle so that would be the last step. Phew that was over an hour to cover all of that. <laughs> Alrighty, I think that is about it. No, I take that back. The very, very last thing I wanted to show you. This is my, let's see, what would I call it? This is my Brag binder. Maybe that's the title I should put on there. No, I'm just kidding. This is um, my binder. That okay, I am not sure what happened. I glanced over at my um, iPad and I noticed it was no longer recording so I had to quick go and look at my phone and see where the recording dropped off. I was just about to show you I believe what is in my completed diamond painting um, uh, binder here. So I'm going to start at this point. If it kind of overlaps a little bit I'm going to when I edit this I'm going to try to you know cut out any overlapping but if there is a little bit, that is why my uh, it stopped recording. So I'm going to start here. This is my binder that I have. I keep all of my completed projects in, all my diamond paintings that I have completed. So let me zoom in and just kind of let's have a look-see. Okay, paint, get out of my way. I am done with you. Okay, so this is the tiger that I showed you um, that I had completed. This was my first square. Um, one thing that I do suggest when you do diamond painting, and I didn't do this because I didn't know to do this, when you get an inventory sheet like this, maybe write on there the date you received it, write on there the date that you started it, and write on there the date that you completed it. Um, another option to that, out on Amazon, of course, they have what's called a diamond painting um, logbook. And there are many um, varieties out there um, as far as the cover and what they look like. What's inside is all identical as far as I know. I do have one of these. I could not find it anywhere. I looked and I could not find it. I wanted to kind of show you what it looked like. But essentially what the logbook does is you put in there what the diamond painting was, when you started it, when you completed it, if you, you know, if it was a gift for somebody who it was for, you know, things like that. I haven't started to fill mine out because I have done so many diamond paintings over the past few years. I don't know when I received them. I don't know when I finished them or started them or any of that. But I am going to go back and I am going to log all these even though I don't have the dates just so I can keep in that nice book um, everything that I have done. Again, you don't get an inventory sheet with your Hua Can uh, diamond paintings from AliExpress. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through all my orders off of AliExpress. If I do not have the inventory sheet in here, I am going to um, copy and paste that picture into MS Word or do a screen print or, you know, save the image, whatever. And I'm going to make a print of that and put it in this book. So there's that. Here is the very first square I did. Here is one that I made for Bob. He likes racing. He especially likes trade racing, which I think he's watching right now. Um, this is uh, NASCAR. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Ugh, getting cotton mouth. Um, so I made them on NASCAR diamond painting one year for Christmas. And this I made for my, let's go up this way, for my son's wedding a couple years ago. And like I showed um, on Bella's uh, diamond painting, I put a little golden tag down here. And um, it said, you know, Cameron and Leah and the date of the wedding down in a gold uh, plate down at the bottom. So uh, that turned out really pretty. Here is little Miss Bella. So again, I did want to say you can have customs made of any picture that you want. Um, if anybody would like any help in how to do that, I don't know if I talked about this in uh, when I thought it was recording as I was going through this or if I talked about it previously about ordering a custom and how to go about it. Um, I didn't go into specifics, but if you would like to somehow get a custom diamond painting and, and want some help with it, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you. This is a diamond painting. Um, I, as I said, gave all of my kids Christmas presents or diamond paintings as Christmas presents. This is a deer that I gave to Heather. Owls that I gave to Mallory because she likes owls. Here is my, um, a girlfriend of mine. Um, this is her cat. So I, I very sneakily got a picture of it off of her Facebook page in all of her photos and I had a custom made up of her cat and gave it to her a couple years ago for Christmas and she loves it. Here's a very large Christmas um, one. This is a 60 by 80 and yeah, I know it's March 1st but it is still hanging on my dining room wall. <laughs> it's got to come down. Um, teddy bear by the Christmas tree, some butterflies. It turned out really pretty. Here is one I did for my daughter, Heather, for her um, birthday last year. They have labs. She had just mentioned in passing she sometime would like a painting with the three different color of labs. And so I found this picture on the internet and I surprised her with that. Here are some, let me see if I can get this over here. Here are some, um, whoop, back over here some seashell um, beach type of diamond paintings that I did. These are, there's four of them. These are up in my other bathroom because it's a beachy type of themed bathroom. This is the bigger one and it is on one wall. And then I have a triple um, paned medicine cabinet. So I did three of these in a smaller size and one is up above each mirror, each door um, to that medicine cabinet. Boy, it'd be nice if all these pictures were in the same place on these papers. I wouldn't have to keep shifting the book. Here's another beachy one for in there. And then this is the third one. Then this happens to be one that I did as a custom and as a surprise. Come on, Lisa, you can do it. Um, that I did as a surprise for my sister. She did something very nice for me. So I um, had this custom, again, something I found off the internet and surprised her for her birthday last March. This is a custom of Misty, and you may have seen or heard me talk about Misty. Um, in one of my uh, videos, I uh, showed all three cats on the floor in here. Um, this is the one that Jaden has connected with the most. Misty and my grandson Jaden are just buds. All he has to do is meow and she'll come running when he gets here after school. And he does have a little bit of a um, um, anger problem that they are working on. And Misty has a tendency of calming him down. So what I thought I would do is I took a, a pretty picture of her with her paws all tucked in. And I had a custom drawn up. I did this diamond painting for him to hang up on his bedroom wall at home. And if he gets upset, he can go down in his bedroom and talk to Misty. And he says it does help him sometimes. So did that. Here is that great big dragon that I tried to show you up here on my desk. Um, this is a 80 by 70. So it is a very large. It's almost as large as the waterfall that I'm doing now. That is a 90 by 70. So it's only 10, 10 centimeters smaller. Um, so there's that one. This one has just an itty bitty little thumbnail, but this is one of the dolphin ones, the yin and yang. Um, uh, dolphin picture that I have to have framed yet. Here is the one with the butterfly in the middle that I have to frame yet. 
Here is the fantasy one that I showed you earlier. So here we are getting to the more recent pictures. Here is the last one that I did. Um, well, actually the moth, the um, lion moth should be before the babies because I finished that one before the babies. And then here is the giant waterfall that I am doing. I am going to, now that I'm showing my uh, waterfall picture, I did do a little clip. I recorded a little clip last week and it is of my diamond painting area and my setup in the living room. And so what I thought I would do is I recorded just a, a little, you know, clip. It's only maybe five minutes long um, of my area at my drafting table in there, kind of showing you what I have where. And on the drafting table is my huge waterfall that I am working on. So it kind of gives you an idea of how big it is. And then many of you have left comments. You would like to see what Bella looks like, although now you have seen her because I showed you a diamond painting of her. Again, she is a little do uh, toy Pomeranian Yorkie. So in that video, she was laying so cute on the back of the couch in the living room. So I took my, my uh, phone over and I recorded her for a little bit too. So you can see Bella in that little clip. So I think at the very end of this video, um, I will insert that clip so that you can see um, my area in the living room. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to say goodbye now, <laughs> but then that clip will roll and, uh, I won't be saying goodbye at the end of that one. Cause it's just, you know, I don't know. Maybe I should just insert it here and then come back and say goodbye. Huh? Maybe I'll do that. Let's insert that clip right now and I'll be right back. So I just kind of wanted to show you my current diamond painting project. I have one more row to go down here, otherwise I'm getting pretty far on it. This is the biggest diamond painting I have done up to this point. This is a 70 by 90 and as you can see, it is of a waterfall. This is the only diamond painting that I am going to have professionally framed because it's going in my living room. But yeah, the setup I have a place for my iPad, ignore all of Maddie's toys in the background. <laughs> and then I do have a light that I shine on here. If I could turn it on from here. And then I do have a rather large, if I can find where it turns on here, and you probably can't see, oh, you kind of can see it. I have a light pad underneath. Now this is in a three size. Let's turn it back off, turn off. Okay. This is an A3 size, which is um, the mid size. A4 is the smallest. And then this A3, which is a little bit bigger. Over here on the side of my drafting table are my tools, which are kind of covered up because of this large diamond painting. Here are my pens, my drill pins that I made, some um, duct tape, extra trays, more duct tape, my waxes, extra trays. This is the roller that I use um, when I am done with a section to get all of the drills kind of popped into place. And then I keep over here on a little table next to me um, I keep my tray of my drills as I am doing my diamond painting. And now I did have a couple of you request. I had talked about Bella, my little dog, and you guys wanted to see her. So this is Bella. She is a toy Yorkie Pomeranian. And she, yeah, she either lays on the back of the couch to look out the window at all the snow, or yes, little princess has a little pillow and blankie down here. It's my pillow and blankie when I want to curl up in my chair, but otherwise it is hers. So Bella, Bella, <gasps> hi. <laughs> 
Okay, so that is, I just kind of wanted to show you my current project. Um, it is getting done. I've been spending a lot of time on doing the videos for YouTube, my coloring video, so I haven't worked on it a whole lot, but I, I do want to get it done in the near future. So, I will go through how I kind of set up my drills, how I set up a brand new diamond painting and just go through the basics. What is diamond painting? How do you set up a kit? What are some of the tools and in, in, uh, different things that you use in diamond painting? So I will be right back. Okay, what did you think? <laughs> I am back. Um, so yeah, that is my area, my drafting table that I got for a whopping 15 bucks on Craigslist, but it works great for what I need it for. Um, where I keep my trays that I showed you when I'm working on my diamond painting and just, yeah, my setup over there, and I really like it. And that is what my little Bella Boo looks like. Uh, she's the one that's yapping in the other room sometimes when I'm coloring or when, you know, anytime I'm doing a video, it seems she has to bark. So <laughs> that is the barker. Um, so I hope you liked this part three of this little diamond painting series. This is the last one. I do anticipate doing some diamond painting and chat videos in the future. I think rather than trying to rig this back up again, on my desk here in the other room. I am going to possibly take my recording um, stand here, my the thing that's attached to my desk. I may unscrew it off my desk here, screw it onto my um, drafting table out there, and maybe record at my drafting table. That would be much, much easier because I also have an iPad stand there, as you've seen, and I look at my iPad to see if I'm in frame and, and that, uh, so I could, you know, have the best of both worlds up there, so we'll see. I'm going to do some playing around with it. This, this desk works great for my coloring, um, but because diamond painting, there's just so much more to it and stuff, I think it would work so much better at the drafting table. So again, I'm going to do some playing around, and I will have things worked out before we do our next diamond and chat. So, I am hoping tomorrow to do some type of coloring video. I am going to be putting up um, part two. I do um, also have that diamond painting and chat, the very first one out there, and now I have this part three. So, part two is going to probably be out there um, right after I'm done making this one because that one is uploaded to YouTube already. So, enough of me rambling on. I have been talking constantly for the past few hours. You guys sick of me yet? So sorry. Um, so I hope everybody's having a terrific, it is now evening here, about nine o'clock in the evening on Saturday night. I hope you are all having a great weekend. Um, um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so and hit that bell so you know when I put up any new videos. I hope, again, everybody's having a terrific weekend, and as always, happy coloring and happy diamond painting. <laughs> Bye, everybody.